There has been a recent development in the way one of the most serious complications of kidney disease is taken care of. Those that will take advantage of these new findings may have a serious chance at improving their creatinine levels. Catherine here, I've been working with people suffering from kidney issues for more than 10 years now and I can tell you for sure that keeping body acidity in check should be one of the top priorities for anyone wanting to improve their creatinine levels. Fact, if you have kidney problems, you must keep track of your body acidity and take action if your levels are out of the right range. But unfortunately, not everyone is doing this and this is bad. Metabolic acidosis, which happens when the body is too acidic, is a dangerous and unfortunately common complication of kidney disease and of diabetes. It's a serious condition. If left untreated, it can lead to bone loss, muscle loss, endocrine disorders, inflammation, and it also damages the kidneys. Metabolic acidosis is a very important cause of kidney damage. We need to prevent or to stop it. This is crucial, as I was saying. What can we do to avoid metabolic acidosis? There are various steps that we can take in all the stages to make sure we are avoiding metabolic acidosis. Managing body acidity, a job the kidneys are tasked to do, is a central point in the management of this condition. The eating plan is the very first step. Avoiding metabolic acidosis is why most people are told to follow a plant-based diet rich in fruit and veggies. A plant-based diet works because it's way less acidic forming than a regular western diet. Then there is supplementation. For many people, avoiding acid forming foods such as meat and processed foods is not enough. They also need to supplement sodium bicarbonate. So question, what's new about controlling body acidity? Sodium bicarbonate is a tried and tested strategy to control body acidity, but it has its pros and cons. Good news is, there has been recent developments in the management of metabolic acidosis that may seriously help you improving your creatinine levels. As we will see, people who will take advantage of this new finding may have a serious chance at improving their creatinine levels. Researchers have found a way to supplement a mineral that's crucial to the body's function, just like for essential vitamins, you cannot live without enough of it. It helps keep blood pressure normal, bones strong, and the heart rhythm steady. And it can be also used as sodium-free way to control body acidity if taken in the correct form. We will see what this amazing supplement is in a moment. Before that, a very important question. Who needs to take sodium bicarbonate or this new sodium-free alternative to control body acidity? Well, a lot of kidney disease sufferers, unfortunately. Metabolic acidosis is fairly common. Statistics say that approximately 40% of those with stage 4 CKD have it. It's more common the more CKD is advanced. People suffering from diabetes are also more likely to have it. Question, how do you know if you have metabolic acidosis? There are a few signs that can tell you if you have this serious condition. Confusion, headache, nausea, weakness, and more. In more serious cases, rapid breathing can be observed. However, this is not the kind of thing you want to wait for signs to display before taking action. This is serious. Someone with rapid breathing due to acidosis is going to need to be hospitalized. Besides, not everyone with metabolic acidosis will have signs. So what you should do, on the other hand, is to get checked regularly and make sure you are not anywhere near developing acidosis. Question: What levels should you keep an eye on in your test results? The most used test to determine if there is acidosis is called the CO2 or bicarbonate test. You should be able to find the CO2 level in your last lab tests and double check that it is in the right range. The normal range for CO2 in your blood is 23 to 29 milli equivalents per liter. Anything lower than that means you have a problem that needs to be dealt with immediately. There are other tests that can be done, including using pH strips at home. These strips are easy to find and cheap and will tell you the pH of your urine. 
What we are aiming for is the pH to be between 6.75 and 7.25. Lower than that means your body is more acidic and higher than that means your body is more alkaline. Now a home test is no replacement for a lab test, so you would still want to be tested with your primary care provider regularly, but you may also use these strips at home to see if you are improving. Guys, I'm taking for granted that anyone following me here is being tested regularly for the most important levels associated with kidney disease. If you are not, talk to your nephrologist as soon as possible. Remember that keeping these levels in the right range is 100% essential if you aim to keep your kidneys working as long as possible. Question, how can sodium bicarbonate help us here? The safest and the most widely prescribed way of keeping this level in the right range is sodium bicarbonate. Administering sodium bicarbonate regularly is a reliable way of improving bicarbonate levels in the body, meaning that the body is now less acidic. Sodium bicarbonate is a base which in chemistry is the opposite of an acid, so it directly makes the body more alkaline. It's a pretty safe and effective way of achieving the key result of keeping CO2 levels in the right range. And it works! But today, there is maybe a better alternative. What are the cons of sodium bicarbonate? It also comes with a couple of downsides. First of all, it can upset your stomach. Sodium bicarbonate should be always taken on an empty stomach, otherwise it will make you bloated. But some people report stomach discomfort when taking it. Another known issue, sodium bicarbonate may cause problems in the long run with gut flora. These issues may be relieved by taking it under the tongue. However, this is not particularly easy to do and not everyone is comfortable with this method. And there is a third issue that cannot be solved this way, the sodium content. It's sodium bicarbonate we are talking about. It contains some sodium. Now, these issues are not a huge deal and frankly, the benefits vastly overweight these small cons. There is, however, a way to avoid all these problems and still have the alkalizing benefit of sodium bicarbonate. Enter magnesium supplementation. Magnesium from supplements or from foods has a ton of benefits. Just like for essential vitamins, you cannot live without enough of it. It helps keep blood pressure normal, bones strong, and the heart rhythm steady. Unfortunately, a deficiency in this mineral is very common among people with kidney problems, especially those taking diuretics and in diabetics, and it may cause poor sleep, high blood pressure, inflammation, and high uric acid levels. Lower serum magnesium levels are also associated with an increased risk of ending up tied to the big D machine. Guys, supplementing magnesium may be the easiest way to improve creatinine levels in the world, at least for some people. And the benefits may be immediate, way faster than you may think. And not many people know this, but magnesium has a very significant alkalizing effect on the body. Yes, some CKD sufferers are now being given magnesium supplements instead of bicarbonate to keep their acidity levels in balance. And by doing this, they may also benefit from the many positive effects magnesium has. As I was saying, keeping magnesium levels in the right range is also key to reach better creatinine levels. Question, what is the best way of supplementing magnesium? There are a dozen types of magnesium supplements you could find. There is magnesium sulfate, carbonate oxide, citrate, and more. Not all of them would help and finding the right one is very important. What a recent study on CKD patients found out is that not all types of magnesium supplements will raise serum magnesium levels in people with CKD. Researchers believe that magnesium oxide is the best option. In a study on hypertension in kidney disease, participants took between 240 and 960 milligrams of magnesium oxide each day to lower their pressure. The researchers found out that taking 300 to 400 milligrams of magnesium supplements daily was the best way. Taking magnesium with vitamin B6 has also shown to improve absorption significantly. Now my advice if you want to supplement magnesium is to first get checked for serum levels, especially for those with a GFR below 20 to 30 because also having too high level of magnesium has its dangers. While it won't damage your kidneys, it's still not a good thing. 
Now guys, supplementing magnesium may have even bigger positive effects than you may think. I've shared with you recently the story of one of my subscribers. His name is Kenneth and he was in stage 3B, but he doesn't have CED anymore. He was able to bring his creatinine levels back to normal, also thanks to a particular magnesium supplement. And if you want to know more, his story is up here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.